All right, guys, Dr. Nate here, and let's talk about dental bridges. Are they safe? How much do they cost? What is the process? Let's jump right in. So what is a dental bridge exactly? A dental bridge is basically when you take two adjacent teeth that are just beside the space that has no tooth and you prepare those tooth. So you drill them down slightly and use those as abutments for the middle tooth. So you kind of use those two adjacent teeth as anchors. And this differs from a dental implant, whereas a dental implant, you basically just put an implant in that edentulous area or that spot where there is no teeth. And then you put a crown on top of that. So the dental bridge, you actually use those two adjacent teeth in between where there is no tooth and you use those as anchors to make it so you have another tooth in that spot where there was no tooth. All right, that was a lot of tooth and teeth and spots and whatever, but what is a dental bridge made out of? So if it's in the back, you could potentially make a dental bridge out of gold or some sort of a high noble material, which doesn't happen as much, but some people do that. Majority of dental bridges are made out of some type of porcelain or Emacs or some sort Sort of ceramic that looks extremely good this looks as good or sometimes even better than your natural teeth and the reason that they can be better than your natural teeth is because these fake teeth or this dental bridge is made in a dental lab that most time will specialize in aesthetics and they will make this dental bridge look absolutely amazing so what is the process for a dental bridge how are you going to get a dental bridge here at drive dental Ed? or pretty much at most dental offices so you're going to come in and if you have a tooth that is there that is fractured or broken or has large decay, what they'll likely do is they'll take out that tooth and they may put some bone graft in that area. Either way, you're gonna have to let that heal for a few weeks to make sure that area where that tooth was can heal up nice and properly. If you did not have a tooth there, you just have a, uh, you have no tooth there and it's been out for a long time, what you'll do is you'll come in, the dentist will prepare those two adjacent teeth. So they're gonna take away some tooth structure uh, to make sure that you can have enough space for that dental bridge. And we need to take away enough tooth structure so that when you put on the dental bridge, it fits nice and good. If you don't take away enough tooth structure, the dental bridge material, the porcelain material, or the Emacs material will be too thin. And if it's too thin, then obviously it's gonna be more likely for a fracture. You do not want your dental bridge to fracture because that is a pain, you just don't want that. Once the dentist is done preparing that tooth, the assistant and the dentist are gonna take an impression of that area and send it off to the dental lab. Before you come back next time, so the end of that first visit, you're gonna leave with what we call provisional or temporary bridge. It will look good, but it will not look as spectacular as your final dental bridge product that you're gonna get in a few weeks. So at the end of that first day, the tooth has been, or the teeth have been prepared, we've taken the impression, we've given you a provisional or temporary bridge, and then you're gonna come back in a couple weeks. In a couple weeks, we're gonna fit in that bridge, make sure it fits really good, make sure your occlusion or your bite is really good, make sure aesthetically you like it, you know, it has to look as good or better than the teeth it was replacing and if you're happy and everybody's happy, we're gonna cement that dental bridge. And if you cement it, it is with a permanent cement. So this dental bridge should last you a long time. If you take really good care of it, which we're gonna talk about in a few minutes, um, it can last you a decade or more potentially. So is a dental bridge safe? And the answer is yes, of course it's safe. We do these bridges pretty much every single day here at the offices. And the reason that we get this question sometimes is because people are trying to figure out exactly what is the process of, de of a dental bridge. And this is it. So like I mentioned before, we're gonna be preparing the two adjacent teeth. If those teeth are nice and healthy, they have nothing going on, you have to think that you are preparing those teeth. You're taking away healthy tooth structure so that you can use those two adjacent teeth um, as an anchor for that tooth that is missing. That's something you have to think about. Rather, if that two adjacent teeth, maybe they have big cavities or they have crowns and need replacing, then yeah, that's no big deal because they already need a crown or some version of a large restoration on it. So you can prepare those teeth and hey, that's pretty much what you're gonna need to do anyway. But if the two adjacent teeth are beautiful, they're pristine, no cavities, healthy, then yes, you have to think about if that is a good option for you. But either way, 
Of course, yes, a dental bridge is safe, but you still have to weigh out your options and make sure you want a bridge versus an implant. So who can get a dental bridge? Yes, not everybody can get a dental bridge, and this is what we look for. Number one, you have to look at the span of teeth that you're gonna cover. So the larger the span, so if you're losing two, three, four, five teeth, and you're trying to cover that with a dental bridge, it is going to be a little bit more difficult than if you're just missing one tooth. So just think of it, the longer the bridge is gonna have to be, the more force is gonna be placed on that bridge, so the more tendency it has to fracture, or maybe the other two adjacent teeth can't support it because it's such a long span. So the longer span, the more tendency for that bridge to break or fail faster than the shorter span bridge. We're also looking for the height that you have for that dental bridge. If the teeth above where the dentulous area is has come down, and if you bite down on the side and you see that there's not much space, there's not much height for that dental bridge to go into, that is going to be a problem. That is one thing we're definitely gonna look at. So we're looking at the length of the bridge and then also the height to make sure there's enough height so that can, we can put an actual good dental bridge in your mouth. Third thing we're looking for is the health of the adjacent teeth. So say you have an edentulous area where there's no teeth and you're gonna look at the two side teeth beside it and you're gonna take a look and we're gonna take a look and we're gonna make sure that those teeth are healthy. What if they have a lot of bone loss or really big cavities or previously had a root canal treatment or anything that's gonna make those teeth unstable if that is the case, they may not be able to take the full force of a dental bridge. Because you have to think that those two adjacent teeth are gonna now take the force of that tooth that's missing as well. So you want those two adjacent teeth to be healthy, healthy, healthy. So remember the three things we're looking for is the length of the bridge, the height that you have, and the health of those two adjacent teeth. Why does a dental bridge fail? So probably number one reason is that the cavities have gone underneath the bridge on those two adjacent teeth. Taking care of a bridge is tough. It's not just like taking care of normal teeth. You have to be better with your brushing and flossing. So what happens is you'll have this bridge and maybe you're not taking care of your teeth as well as you maybe should. And so cavities will seep underneath the bridge into the two adjacent teeth. So if there's recurrent decay, it's gonna get underneath that bridge and then it's gonna fracture those teeth and eventually that bridge is gonna break. Another reason may be that you have excessive force on that bridge. So if there's too much force, the bridge is gonna flex, 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 and maybe it's gonna hurt those two adjacent teeth. Maybe the bridge itself will break or fracture or partially fracture, and that's just because there's too much force on those teeth. So if you have uh, grinding or excessive biting down forces, you may think of getting a night guard for at least at night to protect the bridge and your teeth. So how to keep your dental bridge as long as possible. And as I mentioned before, you wanna keep the teeth and the bridge nice and clean. So we always recommend getting an electric toothbrush. I think electric toothbrushes are so much better than a manual toothbrush. I don't think I know a single dentist that has a manual toothbrush and it's just so much better. So number one, get an electric toothbrush. Number two, you may wanna invest in a water pick. Water pick is good to get in those hard to reach areas and this can kind of shoot those uh, food particles out from underneath the bridge and that is really important. But that does not replace flossing, which is the third thing. Flossing is vital if you have a bridge or don't have a bridge, have all your natural teeth. Flossing can get all the plaque and tartar from in between the teeth, but you're also gonna need something called a floss threader or some version of that that can get underneath the bridge. So remember, you're gonna floss on each side of the bridge, but you need to floss underneath the bridge too. So a floss threader has this little thin point that can go underneath the bridge, and you can kind of floss and get all that gunk out from underneath the bridge, and that's gonna give you the best chance to cure a bridge as long as possible. And also, as mentioned before, you may wanna get a night guard or something to help protect your teeth and protect the bridge in case you clench or grind at night. So will the dental bridge look natural? And of course, the answer is yes. Tons of people have dental bridges and they look absolutely amazing. Our lab, and I'm sure there's a lot of labs out there, create these absolutely stunning aesthetic restorations, and we will do the best job possible and creating the smile that you've always wanted. So what happens is when you come back, we take a look and we make sure the shade matches as perfect as possible to your teeth. But here's a word of advice. This dental bridge will not change colors. It is gonna stay as white as you choose. So what we typically say is if you're gonna get a bridge or a crown or veneers, you wanna whiten your teeth at least a few weeks before we cement the final restoration. 
So typically what happens is you come in, you do some whitening procedure, like a zoom whitening, which is in the office. Maybe you do some take home whitening, but zoom whitening is quite a bit better. And then you get your desired whiteness. You let that fade for a few days or maybe a week so that you get this stable whiteness that you're gonna have of your teeth. At that point is when we're gonna choose the final selection for the color for your dental bridge. So when you seat the bridge, it's gonna look very, very good and very natural as compared to your teeth. Keep in mind, your bridge won't discolor. So if you're drinking lots of sodas, red wines, blueberries, all stuff that's gonna stain your teeth, it will stain your teeth, but it won't stain the bridge. So periodically, you're gonna need to whiten your teeth to make sure it matches that bridge as best as possible. So final question is how much does a dental bridge cost? So in general, the more units you have, the more the cost will be. So if you have a bridge that's three units, so you have the two side teeth, and then the tooth is missing, that is three units. And there's obviously a huge price range depending on where you're at. If you are in like California or New York, it's probably gonna be more expensive than if you're in the Midwest. But in general, it can be anywhere from $700 to $1,500 per tooth. So the more units you have, the more expensive you get. So if it's a three unit bridge, that is gonna be more affordable than a four or five or six unit bridge. Keep in mind as well that dental insurance comes into play like crazy with bridges because most of the time your insurance is going to cover at least a portion of it depending on how good your insurance is. That's why you should choose an office or provider that is in your network or who can max out or get all the dental benefits that, from your insurance as possible and that will make it so that your out of pocket is as least as possible. All right, there you go guys. That is everything you need to know about dental bridges. You know the safety of it. You know it's going to look good. You know what's made out of it you know what we're looking for, you know the cost, you know everything there is to do with dental bridges. But maybe you're trying to figure out if a dental bridge is better for you or an implant. So take a look at this next video where I go into the details of what may be better for you, a dental bridge versus an implant.